right so uh what we will do is we'll first do the remaining two program rules for the tb program in our exercises list so we'll start with exercise four that is a uh, creating a program rule for the TB treatment card uh, to show the disease site in the feedback. So earlier one, we used the disease site to show or hide the EPTB site. Now we are using the disease site and uh, showing it in the feedback widget. So I'm going to maintenance. So uh, first step, I have to create the pointer, the program rule variable to the uh, TB site data value, data element value. So I'm going to program, program rule variable. So I already created TB site program rule variable earlier. Find it. So this one, uh, TB site current, I have created a program rule variable. So if I go through that, it points to the TB disease site and it is the source is data element in the current event. But uh, now I want to show the value in the uh, feedback widget. So feedback widget is something that is open uh, throughout the tracker, tracked entity, entity instance capture events. So it could be in the one uh, first stage or second stage, it could be in any stage. So if I capture the data element in the current event, I might not be able to point it to the exact point because the event currently I have opened might not be having the TB site. So this rule uh, variable which I created earlier might not be suitable for this rule which I'm going to create now because TB program has different stages and under different stages there are kind of different events so uh, but my program rule should show the TB site throughout disregard to what the each event is open so I'm going to create a separate uh, program rule variable for this function, for this rule. So my program will be the same, TB treatment card, and I will give a separate name for this new program rule variable. So I will say uh, TB disease, Newest, let's say newest. So it's not, I'm not using the current uh, data value, I'm using the newest element. So, how do I select this? So, in the source type, we didn't go through all these options. We used data element from the current event, but uh, there are many other options, actually, five other options. So first one is data element from the newest event from a program stage. So as the words say, from a program stage, it will point to the value of the newest stage, newest event. So from one stage, if it's a repeatable stage, the newest event will be captured. Next one is data element from the newest event in the current program. So it doesn't mention about any stages. It will capture newest event value. It will point to the newest event value from the current program. So you can use either of these. So if you are, if you want to 
point to a data element in a certain program stage in your event, you have to use the first one. But if you are okay with using it from any stage, you can point it to the second. So my EPTP site is captured only in one stage. So it is okay to use any of these. So I will use newest event in the current program. If I use newest event in for a program stage, it will also ask the stage also. Then again, you can use diagnosis and select uh, the TB site. Or you can just use newest event from the current program and still you can choose disease site. So for this use case, you can use any of the two methods. So I'm going to save this. So now disregard of the open event, it will catch, it will point to the data value of the TB disease site where it is captured lastly. So I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to create a program rule to show this value in my uh, feedback widget. So my, I'm going to create a new program rule. My program is uh, TB <coughs> treatment card. And I have to give a name for this. So I will say, uh, Show TB site in feedback. So I have to give a good description. I show. Not going to define any priorities. So next I have to enter my program rule expression. So here uh, I have to show the value of the TB site. So I don't, I expect to check anything in the program here. I just want to write that value in the widget. So only thing I can check here is whether there is a value in this uh, TB site data element. So what I can do is I can check whether the TB data, the TB site has a value. I don't need to use any expressions. I don't need to uh, use any logical operators. I just have to check whether it has a value. So for that, I can use this function has value. And as the source field, I can put uh, TB disease newest. So not the current, but the newest. Then I can define my action. My action would be to show it in the this uh, feedback widget. So I'm going to um, show this uh, value of the TB site as a text. So if I click as display text, then it will ask where to show it. I can put it in the program indicator widget or feedback widget. So program indicators we will do tomorrow. So feedback widget, you already know where it is. So I want to display it there. So I'm going to put it in the feedback widget. So next is what to show. So I can put a static text and also the variable text. So I have to put a variable text because I have to display the value in that variable. So to 
identify to give a label to that value, I can type a static text. So I will put TB disease height as static text and then put the variable value as variable text. So if I put TB disease newest, then it will show TB disease site as a static text and the value from this variable as a text. I'm going to commit this now. I'm going to save. So I have created a program rule variable to capture, to show the, to point to the value from the newest event and to show it in the feedback widget. So I'll clear my cache to be safe. Then I'll go to like a capture. to TB program. Let me open one of these. So in this uh, patient, Kumar, the TB disease site is pulmonary and you can already see that in the TB disease site, pulmonary is displayed in the feedback widget. So if I change this to extra pulmonary, you can see that in the feedback widget, the text has changed to extra pulmonary. So this one, I have used the newest event because I might be the data or the data entry person might be in the <clears throat> stage of continuation phase. So he or she might be entering data for this stage or this stage continuation phase two or even end of treatment. We might be recording the treatment outcome, but still you have to show the TB disease site. So this value cannot be taken from the current stage, which is open. It is available in a previous stage. So that's why we changed the source there. We created a new variable there. So if you want to read more about uh, the stages, the sources, you can go to the user guide. So here they give a good description about different source types for program rule variables. So which we already saw some in action. So there is data element from the newest event for a program stage, data element from the newest event in the current program. So you can define a stage in the first one. So second one doesn't have a stage. So if you want to capture data from a specific stage only, you can use the first one, but you don't want to, you're not concerned from which stage, you can use the second one. And you can also read how these changes in event programs if you want. Then the current event, which we already did. Then also you can use data element from a previous stage, previous event. So somebody, I think asked this in as a question. So you can uh, get data. We can point to a data from a previous event also. So this is useful when you are checking for any progression from the previous value. So you can check whether the weight is increasing. So you check the previous events value and you can create a program rule. So there is a, another thing called calculated value where you can assign a value to be used for other program rules. I'm not going to complicate uh, by explaining all, the, all these at the moment. You can read and uh, if you have such uh, requirement, you can read it then the tract entity attribute, which we will see in a different example, where you use 
the attributes, not the data element as the source. So we can see that uh, in our next example. So I hope uh, this exercise four, some of you might have been able to create it with me. Some will uh, create it later. So I hope it's clear. So uh, let's move on to exercise five in the same program, TB program. So this one is to uh, calculate and assign the age of the patient from the date of birth. So in patient registration, what you capture is, if I go to register, what you capture is date of birth, and there is a field for age. So these are all attributes, tract entity attributes. So when I, when somebody puts the date of birth, the age should be automatically assigned. So that one we will see how to configure now. So I'm going back to my maintenance app and uh, then program. So first step would be to create the program rule variable. So this time I have to point to a tract entity attribute, which is date of birth. So my expression should point to my date of birth and then I should be able to calculate the age and assign it to age data element. So I'm going to create program rule variable. So this going to TB program, TB treatment card. Uh, I'll, what is DHIS? So I'll use DHIS. Uh, date of birth. So I'm pointing my variable to date of birth. So what is the source here? The source is tract entity attribute, not a data element. So I'm going to point to tract entity attribute and then select my tract entity attribute, which is date of birth. And I'm going to save it, right. Then I'm going to create the program rule to assign age to the uh, age element. So I'm going to create another program rule. So my program is TB treatment card. And uh, I have to give a name to this program rule. I will say DB patient age. Then I have to give a description. I will say assign age from date of birth. Next. I need to put an expression. So here again, I don't have anything to check. I don't need anything to be evaluated to be true to execute this action. I just need that attribute to have value. So what I'm going to do is like in similar previous occasion, I will check whether my, uh, data attract entity attribute has a value. So I'm going to use this function has value. And my source field, I have to replace with my variable. So I'm going to remove this and put my uh, date of birth here. So this will check whether date of birth attribute has a value. Then, I have to define my action. So my action would be to assign a value to the age 
fact entity attribute. So I'm going to create a value, create an action. So on top, it has this assign value action. Let's click on that. And uh, then I have to define where to assign this. So I have to assign this to a tracked entity attribute, which is displayed in the front uh, registration page. So I have to assign it to age. I'm not going to assign to your data element, not, not to a program rule. Then I have to build the expression on what to assign. So I need to know how to calculate age from the date of birth. So I have the date of birth and I have to think of a function to get age in years to assign to that. So let's see what are the functions I have. So if you go through the function list, you have years between function. So years between function, you can define two dates and this will automatically calculate and out the number of years in between those two dates. So if I select that, then I have to define the two dates. So my two dates will be, one is the pointer which we made, the tracked entity, sorry, uh, the program rule variable which we made called uh, date of birth. So date of birth and second date will be, I'm calculating the age for up to today. So I can use this built-in variable current date. Let's use this one. So I'm calculating years between the date of birth and the current date and assigning it to the age. So let's say I'll go through the program rule configuration again, select the program, select, gave a name and assign, give a description, then the program rule expression. I'm checking whether the age of date of birth has a value and in the action, I'm assigning value to age using this formula. Let's save it. Let's see whether the program rule which we made is working now. I cleared my cache. I'm going to track a capture. So I'll go to the TB program. Now, if I start to register a patient, I get the attributes which I need to record. Let's try putting a date of birth for this patient. And you can now see that age is automatically assigned to the tracked entity attribute. So my uh, program rule is working fine and as I intended. So that is how you configure a program rule for attributes. So just uh, referring back to the um, user guide. So if somebody is interested about go to this later. About the operators then about the functions, the list of functions which we used, we have used a few of these. And some of the variables, the variables descriptions we have used. So you can go through the guide if you want 
a different rule to be created for your own instance you can check whether you can use any of these functions variables and operators uh, in, mentioned in the guide right so one more exercise on the antenatal clinic so uh, we will create the anc program rule for gravity and parity which i showed earlier so i'm going to do that in the demo instance so uh, this is because uh, there was some alterations done in the customize instance uh, anc program so i had to use this demo version so let's go to the maintenance here so for your exercise you can use the customize instance where you created your anc program and uh, please use your anc program you created in the customize instance for this uh, exercise too so if i go to program then uh, program rule Check whether there are any the internet look here yeah, and it it's right we don't have the gravity program rule here right so uh if you can remember the program rule function i wanted to hide parity if the gravity is one or blank so when you are entering uh, the gravity of a mother if you enter two or above the parity uh, should be able to capture you should be able to capture parity so i will start from the beginning so i'm going to create a program rule first so this program rule uh, variable should point to gravity so i'm going to create this now because it's not here so my program is antenatal care i have to give a name i'll give gravity and uh, my source type now i can use data element in the current event so because it's a skip logic program rule when i select when i enter the gravity it should automatically show hide the parity data capturing element below that so it's in the same event as where we record gravity so it's in the current event and uh, then i have to select what data element it should point to it should be to gravity then i'm going to save it so now i have my program rule variable created next uh, we need, we are going to create the program rule so my program rule is now you work in your head whether you first check whether gravity is one or below that one or blank or zero. then if it's one or blank you hide parity parity if it's more than one you can um, you have to show the field to enter parity so i'm going to create program rule Antenatal care name. Let's give a name for this. Let's see height parity. Parity. If. description height parity is 
one. I gave a name, I gave a description, then I need to create my program rule expression. So for this, I'm going to use the program rule variable, which I created for gravity. So uh, you can uh, define the program rule in any method. Uh, you can say gravity equals one or gravity equals blank. Or another way to say that is gravity equals or is equal or less than one. So there might be many different ways. So I will uh, use the first method I mentioned. So I'm going to say gravity equals one. So here you don't need quotes because it's a number. But if it's a text, you have to put it within quotes. Then also I have to hide it if it's uh, blank. And gravity then equals, now I have to put quotes blank within the quotes. So because it's a numerical, I think uh, can put zero. Now let's say I'll put it in the other way, which would be better. Say gravity is less than or equal to one. So it's also the similar same thing. So if it's one or less than that, I have to hide my uh, data entry field. So I'm going to define the action, which is to hide parity. I'm going to hide field, which these things I think, which we did earlier. Then the data element to hide is parity. And uh, here we can define custom message or it will display the default message. And this time it will put a custom message. Is this stand to so again I'm going back to refresh so antenatal care program selected I have given a name I have given a description then I have given my expression as gravity less equal or less than one. If it's equal or less than one, I'm going to hide parity and also give a message. Save, clear cache. Then I'll see whether the rule is working as I expected. Antenatal care. I can maybe register a new mother here. But continue. So I'm going to create a registration here. So I have the gravity, let's put two. And when I put two, I can see the parity uh, data element is coming up. So let's try one. It's going, it's hidden. Now let's try 
2 again and put a parity 1. So now we have put gravity as 2 and parity as 1. So that mother had previous two pregnancies with one birth after 24 weeks. But uh, let's say I'm going to change it back to 1. Now my message is coming parity blank as gravity is less than 2. The message exactly as I defined. So my rule is working exactly as I want. So that's, uh, I think, the end of third exercise. So we have created, uh, we have done all the five exercises which we were expected. And uh, also I'll just go back to the user manual to show you about the actions also, if somebody wants to read more on the actions. So this is documentation about the list of actions. Most of the things I think we covered, but if you want to read further, there is assign value, which we did, display text, which we did. Then there's another thing called key pair value display, errors, error on complete, then hide field we did. So rather than hide field, we can hide sections or we can hide stages. We can make a field mandatory, then show error we did, uh, show error, show warnings we did, then warnings on complete. You can also send a message. You can schedule a message or you can uh, hide specific options. So rather than hiding a data element, depending on a value of the previous uh, data element, you can hide option from an option set. So this is also very useful. So you might come across situations where this is needed. And also uh, you can group the options when you are creating options and you can use uh, these groups also to hide or show. So this might come in handy when you are creating programs for your work. All right, so that's, I think, all about what we intended to cover today. So I went slow. I don't know whether I might, you might have felt slower for some people, but uh, because it's a new concept and somebody, some many people were not uh, tried this before, we had to go slow, but uh, we actually finished on time.